Welcome to Graduating Indiana 2014, a conversation about improving the outcomes for Indiana students after high school. College and careers await, and it takes a whole community from economic development and city planning to K-12 education and out-of-school programs, business, and higher education to create pathways for success. I'm Jill Dittmeyer, your host for this afternoon's discussion. And joining us today are Reginald McGregor. He is the manager of engineering employee development at Rolls-Royce. Teresa Lubbers, the commissioner of the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. Ryan Vaughn, chief of staff for the city of Indianapolis mayor's office. Sean Wright Browner, she's director of the J. Everett Light Career Center, MSD Washington Township. And Debbie Zipes, the president of the Indiana After School Network. And thank you all of you for joining us here today. And I'd kind of like to refer to you all as the village people, so to speak, because as we know, the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And that's really what we're talking about here, especially when it comes to education. And gone are the days when we, would, we knew we were going to go to school K through 12 and then go to, to college afterwards and get a job and live happily ever after. It's, it's a little tougher out there for kids these days. And there is a lot of effort now to start early, even before kids get into school, and then follow them all the way through. And each of you really has that specialty, which is why we've brought you all here today to, to share what's worked for you and what you think will help us improve things here in Indiana. So let's start at the beginning, the, the, the kind of preparatory. Before those kids go to school now, we're trying to work on efforts to make them more prepared. And Ryan, we know that uh, Mayor Greg Ballard has recently rolled out a program to that to kind of get focus back again on that, uh, that pre-K education plan. And what all can we expect from that? Well, the mayor's uh, really taken a look at this through a, a lens different than just education, but really um, how do we address what ends up being a crime issue in our community. And, uh, you know, most of the evidence would suggest to us that, uh, you know, crime is obviously driven by criminals, but criminals don't choose to be criminals. Uh, people end up being criminals because they lack economic hope and economic ability. And the way to cure that in the front end is to make uh, investments in education so that you have the skills to earn a living and don't have to resort to crime in order to pay bills or, you know, take your girlfriend out to eat or th things of that nature. Um, as we began to sort of fold back the layers of that, or the layers of that onion, one of the key drivers to success um, is, is preschool, an investment in preschool, and uh, getting to children, especially, frankly, children in poverty, uh, earlier so that they have an opportunity to be more prepared for school. That leads to a variety of positive impacts. Um, they're much more likely to be able to read by third grade, much less likely to have be behavioral problems, much less likely to be um, engaged in criminal activity. Uh, generally, they're more, th more healthy socially and uh, physically. And so that investment early on, uh, we believe, is, a, is a, a, a core driver of what dictates behavior later in their lives, whether it's success socially and, and, and at work or, uh, or frankly, uh, failure in turning to a life of crime. And part of that, a big part of that is going to be that outreach, getting out to the people in the neighborhood and getting that word out, which is all of you deal with different neighborhoods, so to, so to speak, with the, the people in your businesses and your own neighborhoods as well. And, and how do, do you guys foresee helping something like this to work for the city of Indianapolis with, with different programs from, from different school ages and that kind of thing? Well, we really see, so I'm with the Indiana After School Network, and we really see the value of after school and summer programs that are supporting kids once they hit school. So after they're um, in kindergarten all the way through high school, giving kids really compelling, exciting things to do outside the school day. And I don't know um, how many of you know, but the highest crime time hours for kids are actually from 3 to 6 p.m. on weekdays when parents are working and kids are um, home alone. And in Indiana, we have over 300,000 kids that go home alone unsupervised every single day. So making sure that communities have these programs is really vital. It's also a huge opportunity to expand the learning hours for kids. If you add up the number of hours that a child can be in an after school or a summer program, it adds up to the same number of hours as 144 school days. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge opportunity to expand the learning for kids. And we know that access is not equal across the state. So the more affluent kids will have 6,000 uh, to 8,000 more hours of learning and enrichment by the eighth grade compared to the low income peers. Mm -hmm. So we could really be 
uh, making a huge difference in the opportunity gap and the achievement gap by having high quality after school and summer programs. It's really all about flexibility, right. isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about being flexible even before kids go into school by reaching out and getting everybody to kind of work together to, to move them in that in that uh, that way. And, and especially with what we expect for kids to attain once they are in school now with, with changing standards mm -hmm. as well. Well, early childhood education is critical to get students off to a strong start. And then a quality K through 12 experience is um, essential as well. And then we often say at the Commission for Higher Education, we're not doing all this hard work to get students off to a good start, just to make sure that they have high academic standards to just graduate from high school, as important as that is. But in the 21st century, you really need education and training beyond high school. If we're really going to reinvent Indiana's economy, it must be done around education and training. And as you've mentioned, we need all hands on deck to do that, and we need to do it with a great sense of urgency. Um, we can't afford for students to be anonymous. We can't afford to lose them. We need to make sure they have, under, they have an understanding of career pathways and what uh, opportunities in the workforce will be there as well. And so I think it does take all of us doing our part. And Rolls-Royce, I know, really works a lot in that effort. Right. One thing that we find key when we talk about education is also making sure students have an idea or opportunity to see me, see us as technicians, engineers, or I would call it stemmers. A lot of times, most companies encourage their employees to mentor, facilitate, train, coach, whatever the case may be. But the idea that most of us have some aha moment. And we always look for an opportunity to talk about our aha moment. And most of us, in most cases, had that one person, whether it was in school, out of school, somebody just in the neighborhood who said, oh yeah, you can do that. You can go be that person. So as we encourage our employees to be those mentors and be that example and really actually bring that education to life. So we talk about doing math and science, but bring it to life like, as I do math at work, this is why I, it's so rewarding to me. I had to one day had to go back and look, grab my old science book. But when I grabbed my science book, oh yeah, I got that problem solved. So, so it becomes rewarding to you as an individual and also as you see it into a young person's life. And I know J. Everett Light Career Center, uh, uh, always a, a great opportunity for students, but now maybe even more crucial than ever right. as students have to start learning earlier for what they're going to do afterwards. Career technical is not what your mom mm -hmm. and dad took uh, when they were in school. I, I always tell people I have the best job in the state of Indiana because the rewards are so overwhelming. I, uh, we, we offer what we call the trifecta in career technical. They get college uh, credit, dual credit, that they can take with them free so they don't have to pay for it, and that helps their parents. We also offer credit towards high school graduation, and then we also offer certification. So we have highly qualified teenagers who we place out there at Rolls-Royce that uh, are over their lifetime, their earning potential will be higher than anyone, uh, anyone who just goes sometimes to a traditional four-year college. So I think it's an amazing place to see 17 and 18-year-old students welding, doing uh, uh, CAD work, working in our restaurant, and uh, uh, you will be just overwhelmed at how proud they are uh, because on average, our students have higher graduation rate, they have better attendance, and they are very successful. It is that aha moment mm -hmm. all the time, yes. isn't it? Yes. And I would think with the same with the giving them something to do when they're not in school too. They have to have that aha moment mm -hmm. there as well. Absolutely. And we need to be able to support our kids at all ages. So starting when they're really little all the way through elementary, middle, and high school to continue to expose them to all these kinds of opportunities throughout their uh, growing up period. And I think once again, and then that kind of rounds it back around to what, what, what the mayor's program is trying to do. It is to solve some of those bigger issues, social issue problems, if we can address them early on. Well, the, the data she mentioned is, is, is right on. <clears throat> the, the after school programs are very important. You know, we see it uh, from a public safety side when kids are employed, uh, really kind of regardless of the task that they're employed, whether it's trimming weeds in parks or cleaning up a neighborhood or engaging in uh, you know, advanced learning, uh, they're occupied and they're invested and uh, as a result, they're not misbehaving. And we see that uh, in, the, in the suburb programs, when they're active and they're working, uh, there's less demand for our public safety resources and when they're not, um, and these, these kids don't have an opportunity to learn, or they don't have a, a discipline that they're studying, uh, that's when we see trouble kind of erupt. And so that's absolutely true. 
you know, another thing that's really been great at the city level is the mayor's robotics competition. Um, you know, we didn't even have a robotics competition uh, four years ago, and, and the mayor really believes strongly that we need to start kids at a very young age. Uh, we're now all the way down in the grade schools, mm -hmm. and uh, four years later, we have the best robotics competition in the country. Uh, and the mayor's only sort of critical goal he wanted for us was to make sure we grew it every year and make sure that the trophy was bigger than any trophy <laughs> uh, for any sports team state championship. And, and uh, that's been a huge draw. I mean, we fill Banker's Life Fieldhouse now every year with kids from all kinds of high schools and middle schools and grade schools um, learning about, uh, about robots. But isn't that great? Because what that shows is we're changing the culture of Indiana to understand and value education. And uh, we need to be very honest and clear with our students and to say to high school students, if you drop out of high school, there are no career pathways for you. Mm -hmm. Now you may tell me somebody you know who did, but chances are it won't be you. And if you graduate from high school and you go straight into a career, you need as was mentioned, you need a high school diploma and a credential of some sort, and you have an opportunity for a career pathway. And if you go to college, and we need more of you too, then you need to graduate from college, not just go to college, or else you have debt and no degree. I, mean, I think we need to be really clear in the message that we give, because this is about changing a culture where you did not need to have education to have a good quality of life. Those days are gone. And we have to bring the parents into that somehow too and, and get them on the same path too as well. And, and that's probably a difficult task too. Even the disenfranchised parents, we have a very, very strong adult education program. And in that, we educate the ENL parents, English as a native language, as well as uh, other parents who are uninformed. Uh, we also have adult pathways. Uh, so they can be getting their uh, certification as an adult at Jarrett Light in welding. Uh, CD, uh, uh, commercial driving. So we, we not only are trying to address the needs of the high school students, mm -hmm. but those adults who find themselves out of work and uh, not to have a high school diploma. To t kind of break that cycle, because sadly or, we yes. do see that a lot Correct. of uh, uh, the parents never finished high school them right. themselves. And think of the message that sends to their children when right. they see their adult parents doing that. Mm -hmm. And we have about 750,000 adults in Indiana who have some college but no degree. So we're trying to reach out to them and make it easy for the, easier for them to come back and complete their degree and have the benefit of that. Um, so I think you know it's a we have messages to different groups that we need to target, but we need to be really clear about how we do it. Correct. And that whole mentoring thing it, right. it goes back to that as well. Right. So even as a sponsor for like say the, the mayor's of X Robotics program or First Robotics, whatever the case may be, a lot of time industry is involved with it because it allows a place for parents to come and see. It allowed for kids to perform at expectation that they might not be set in their school, so they begin to perform at a different level. Competition is good, and, and it's, it's a competitive world. I mean, it, it is what it is. But it's not really about the robot. It's really about their skills in terms of teamwork, communicating with one, with one another, making changes, being creative, being innovative, and then having that parent or that special someone in the stands cheering them on. Again, it helps with that aha moment. And then it also infuses them I can do this, I can be this, and I can achieve something. And then we come alongside as industry, by the way, I do this for a living. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I get paid to do it. Yes. <laughs> and I wish I had the opportunity to do it when I was nine years old. Yes. So you already there. It's that reinforcement because technology is changing and it's growing and who knows what it's going to be like right. next week, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not everybody gets that and not everybody can do that, but we can't scare away those kids. I think with STEM, we've done a lot better outreach to, to girls mm -hmm. and that kind of thing too, but not everybody can go down that path right, either. Right. And I think it's uh, important that non-traditional placement is also important. You mentioned girls in STEM and, 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 and guys in cosmetology. We also have to encourage that uh, because uh, not only you mentioned the parents seeing them, but we need to see non-traditional uh, skills being trained also. But let's be clear, STEM is not necessarily a curriculum or a program. STEM sure. is, the, is a skill right. that you're learning. So STEM, whether you're a accountant, mm -hmm. working at McDonald's, engineering, whatever the case may be, it's a skill set in terms of being, again, innovative, creative, and can solve a problem meeting a customer demand. So, so it's, so it's not a STEM in terms of a career. I mean, it is a STEM career, but we're talking about a skill set. 
that would prepare this uh, future generation as well. And I and if the science, technology, uh, <laughs> science is cooking, and we there's a right. big you know <laughs> restaurant business. It's all about uh, putting the right ingredients together, right. adding things together. That's math, mm -hmm. and to make kids look at things in a different way. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think we have to also be honest about our economy too. You know, not only do we have to be honest about the the likelihood of success if you're not completing your degrees or, or what have you, but we also have to recognize that our economy is changing where certain skill sets are not being addressed. I mean, there's growing jobs in healthcare, growing jobs in IT, but not sufficient workforce out there to address those needs. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about not only how we're educating, but what we're educating on, we have, to, we have to recognize that we need to be training people to fulfill those jobs because those are the markets that are growing. That's where the opportunity is. So it's very important to have a, you know, uh, be able to work in a team and, and, and right. choose your career, but at the same time, you have to have very specific skill sets that are in demand as well. Yeah. And I think that's, once again, where the business community comes back in to step back in to help this whole culture and raise it to say, okay, here are the jobs that we have and here's what we need. And now we, we take it back to the schools and, and let's start teaching this early. And so it's, it's more comfortable for kids from a very early age. And one of the key things I think that we need to do as a, as a culture in Indiana is make sure that our teachers, our youth workers, the people that are working directly with kids are informed about all these opportunities and strategies to integrate it into everyday experiences um, with uh, their regular curriculum or their regular programming. So whether they're doing art or they're doing music or they're doing math or science or whatever it is, that they're infusing into that, that, hey, this can connect to, if you're excited about this activity, this can connect into a career for you. And once again, we go back mm -hmm. to the teachers mm -hmm. who, back in the day, all they had to worry about was their daily lesson plan and taking mm -hmm. care of the kids. Now they're faced with kids, many are hungry, many don't have the right attire. Uh, they have a whole different set of pressures that they're dealing with mm -hmm. as well. H how do we help our teachers? Professional development, uh, coaching, uh, being that lead learner, because I call myself not the principal or, or director, I'm the lead learner. So I think learning is 360, so that I have to actually model that behavior uh, because there are some schools that maybe aren't e effective in that area. Uh, but also I want to teach them soft skills like we're teaching our kids. We're doing a big uh, campaign on de developing soft skills among our students because, yes, they know how to do the hard skills. They know how to weld. They know how to do service a car. But how do they uh, incorporate that customer service? And we're doing that with our teachers too. So it's all 360. Resources are important as well. I'm, you know, no problem is solved by simply throwing money at it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, our our demographics as a city are changing, um, as a country are changing. You know, we have about 20 percent more children in poverty now than we did in 2000. So there's a significant growth there. With that comes uh, challenges. You know, they come to school hungry potentially, um, or you know, they're not picked up on time. Um, or, or they have other challenges associated with poverty, health issues, whatnot. And so we have, to, we have to make sure that our teachers have the resources to address these issues so they can create an environment where they can teach and a child can learn. And obviously with the Common Core standards are gone for Indiana, we have a whole new set of standards that students and teachers all have to adapt to and change that we believe really will help the future as sure. well. Well, they're aligned to career and college readiness, which is what mm -hmm. standards have always had to be. Will these yeah. students be prepared for a career or continue in, in college? And, um, you know, we have to, if, if, this, if this is what students need to know in order to be successful, then we need to start as early as possible to convey that. Our, our curriculum needs to be guided by that. Our assessments need to be guided by that because our hiring practices will be. Mm -hmm. And we also want to prepare our kids We'd like to have them all stay here in Indianapolis and Indiana, but we, some of them need to step outside of the state and do things too. And to be ready for that, to be, to be ready for things that, that happen in, in different levels of the world. And how we all kind of go about that too, with more, maybe more of that hands-on kind of ability to and find a job. And that international thought. Yes. <laughs> well, it's a global workforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have programs where we have to send some of our graduates uh, to the UK, Germany, mm -hmm. Singapore, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Uh, things have changed drastically when you start talking about students and make, make, making a choice between an internship or they have the questions, or should I study abroad mm -hmm. because I want to just broaden my skill set and understand different cultures. And that's, and that's welcome because it is a, on a global workforce, but we also a diverse workforce. Mm -hmm. And how do, we, how do we do that? How do we help a, a, a student make that decision? 
whether to, to take that internship or to, to go globally or to, to stay here or, or to leave. Well, one of the things we can do with internships is we've uh, redesigned our work-study program that it's, so that it's not what the traditional federal work-study program used to be, which we think of people working in the school cafeteria. And what we found is that students who needed to work often couldn't take internships that were non-paid internships. So as a state, we're now paying half of the cost for the internships for students who are our financial needs students. So that's one way. I think advising both in, in the K-12 sector and the higher education level as well. Matching this to your graduation plan in high school and your degree map in college, which we now have both, which then can actually talk about a career pathway. You know, talking about the first job is not likely to be the last job that someone takes. So these kind of critical thinking skills that we've talked about, the resiliency to keep learning and understanding how the market is changing, it's hard for us even to think about what that market's going to look like. And so we need to make sure that students are prepared to learn how to think as well as do a good job in their current position. Uh, so I think advising is critically important. And I think even that could come back to the after school kind of program type of thing too, to, to realize that things that you enjoy when you're not in school, you could actually make a living doing. Right. Right. I think the really exciting opportunity for after school and summer programs is that you can invite the community in. I mean, these are very flexible hours. You're not going to fail. You don't have to get tested. There's not this 50 minute uh, window. And so you can bring in Rolls Royce. You can bring in all these different kinds of experiences. You can go visit museums. You can build things um, without the, any pressure or testing and all of that. So it's really just a great learning opportunity and a way to bring in experts from the community to really connect kids to what's possible. Do you find a certain age that they're more connected and more ready to take that aha movement moment and move it forward? I would say that el the elementary school students um, is the the um, the easiest environment, the easiest uh, group to program for. And um, as you get with older kids, you have to be much more compelling and engaging because they can vote with their feet mm -hmm. and they can make other choices. So you have to get more sophisticated as they get older in programming. Of course, mm -hmm. this all takes money, and education <laughs> costs mm -hmm. money, mm -hmm. and that's another big component in this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about all these great programs and these great opportunities for kids, but if they can't afford to take advantage yeah. of them, what do we do? How do we help that? You have to direct resources to accessibility and affordability. I mean, those are the key drivers for opportunity in education. And, um, you know, Indiana is one of 10 states in the, in the country that doesn't dedicate money to preschool. That's something I think we need to revisit. It's such a compelling case that at the local level, the mayor is taking money, which is frankly traditionally for other activities, and, and, and focusing it on making uh, preschool more accessible and more affordable for qualifying folks because we believe it's such a huge driver of the ultimate outcome of, of opportunity for these kids. And so it just takes money and it takes political courage to, to raise that money and, and then apply it where it needs to be spent. I mean, I think the principle is you pay for what you value. Right. So for example, we actually have a performance funding formula for higher ed where we've decided that there are certain things that are important to the states. We need more people to graduate. We need more of them to graduate on time. We need more of our at-risk students. And so you drive your money based on what you value as a state. And our strategic plan guides us. And you know, as a state, we're trying to raise the, the educational attainment level of Hoosiers. Uh, you know, we usually rank around 40th in the nation in our education attainment level. That's a really hard number to move. We've said we need to you know, get to 60% of Hoosiers having some quality degree beyond high school, including a workforce credential. And so if you believe that's where you need to be, then you have to pay for what you value to get there. And once again, that goes back to the business world too, right. as well. And we want to be, back and, and the thing is, so as industry, we want to be good community partners. Mm -hmm. Now, that comes in different ways. There are ways where we have volunteer hours. Well, volunteer hours is a cost to that company, the bottom line, no doubt about it. But then there are some programs that we dedicate funding to it. Uh, but the biggest thing, the one, the one thing I like about Indianapolis, or Indiana really as a state, most of our companies are already engaged. It's not many that you have to go in and say, will you invest? Most are already, because even though I have a Rolls Royce name, I'm still a parent, I still live in my neighborhood, I'm still a citizen. And regardless how the size of a company, there's parents inside that company, there are people who are community leaders inside that company who also help, as I call, allocate funding, mentor hours, or any other resources that's available to, to our community, because we want to be, and we are good community partners.
And I think that's what each of you have, have done with your programs too, is that reaching out to, to everybody is part of the village and to, and to keep that, that message going out there to people as well too. I think I'm fortunate to be, Jarrett Light Career Center is in such a great area. We're surrounded by hospitals. We partner with them. We're surrounded by auto uh, de uh, dealers. We, we get support from them and the restaurants. Don't forget, that's really important. So of course, those are the three areas that are growing at Kurt Jabber Light Career Center because we are in the hotbed of those three uh, industries. I think we really need to highlight the 21st Century Scholars Program in Indiana too, which is our Promise Scholarship for students that if you do what you need to do in high school, we'll make sure you can afford to go to college. We have 100,000 21st Century Scholars in Indiana between 7th grade sign up. We're very invested in their success and I think it's making a difference. Well, you all have made a difference for us today. Thank you for joining us and you at home too. Thanks to all of you. We know the conversation about improving college and career readiness for our students isn't over. So we encourage you to join the discussion and get more information at amgrad.wfyi.org. I'm Jill Dittmeyer. Thank you for joining us.